All right, everyone, I'd like to thank you for coming tonight. And I'm going to call to order the city council meeting. If you could all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Molly, if you'd be so kind to help with the roll call. Alderperson Henry. Here. Alderperson Schaefer. Here. Alderperson Valdi. Here. Alderperson Wilkin. Here. Alderperson Grimmer. Here. Alderperson Price. Here. Alderperson Eicher. Here. Mayor Atwell. Present. Administrator Hafner. Here. Great. Thank you very much. Move on to number four, approval of the following meeting minutes. I will move to approve the May 1st, 2023 council minutes. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. Okay, we're on to number five, City of Delafield citizens comments. Um, we have a number of people in the room today, so I'm gonna go through uh, the uh, statements that I always make when we have a relatively full room. Uh, thank you for coming tonight. We're glad you're here. We're eager to listen to your comments on all items on or off the agenda. But please keep your comments to a maximum of three minutes. If there aren't very many people here, we use a rule of five minutes, but when we have a full room like this, it's three minutes. We need to keep the meeting going and we need to have an opportunity for the council to debate the things that are on the agenda tonight and get out of here at a reasonable hour. Um, please do not repeat what others have said Simply tell us you agree with their comments, add any new comments you might have, and then we'll move on to the next person. I see some new faces, and we will help you through the process. If you're unsure of something, please just ask. When you come up, we need to hear your name and address first. Then the Common Council will listen to what you have to say. They are not allowed to discuss any of these topics with you. We are here to listen. I'd also like to remind you that reaching out to your older person can also be a great first step in communicating and escalating uh, for any concerns or feedback. So let's get started. Who would like to be first? Come on up. And I'll give you a heads up when you're getting close to the three minutes sure. and then would ask everybody to adhere to that three minutes. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Thanks a lot. Hi. I'm Jackie Lydon, 1614 West Shore Drive, Delafield on Lake Nagawicka. I've been in front of you with many environmental concerns over the years, but you could put all of those together and it wouldn't come to half of my passion for Lake Nagawicka. I was a girl on that lake, my grandfather a fishing guide. I hope I die an old woman on that lake. And I and many of my fellow citizens here tonight will protect it to the best of our law abiding ability. So therefore, let me introduce myself in another role as the co-chair of the Defenders of St. John's Bay, a group of residents newly organized to oppose the immense fiscal and environmental damage this ill-considered project would cause by putting a pier in a recognized sensitive site. Neither the city nor the DNR have looked at anything other than a pier structure, as if it would magically have no impact of any kind on anything. Other sites that might have been possible like Bleecker Street, have not really been seriously discussed. I'll let my colleagues explain the points of how fiscally and environmentally irresponsible this is. Even though the pier has never had majority support, it has been pushed through. What the defenders of St. John's Bay will do is contest the DNR decision by May the 24th. The defenders of St. John's Bay have formed a 5013C entity to which you may contribute tonight on website or get in touch with me or write to us at St. John's Bay Defenders at gmail.com. We have retained legal counsel. Mary Beth Parenteau of Madison's Fredrickson and Byron firm is here. Mary Beth is recommended to us as one of the state's top water law experts, and she will be advising us every step of the way. We're also working with the Waukesha County Environmental Action League, which is helping us write our appeal. The DNR has 30 days to respond to the challenge of why it ignored its own obligations to consider adverse environmental impacts. The city of Delafield has 15 days to respond after that. We will also make our voices heard at the Wisconsin Waterways Commission on August the 8th, which is writing the water grants. 
We will proceed with discovery at every turn. And I'd like to say something to my fellow lakeside property owners, including those of you who support a pier, which, you know, again, a pier somewhere else might not be so bad, which would be an unregulated use four months of the year and for which we will all pay all year. As of 2018, the Lake Welfare Commission reported 528 properties on its list. The, two, the 2023 tax roll has 2,989 taxable properties listed in the city's tax base. Even if every lake resident wanted to see a pier on St. John's Bay, which I assure you we do not, that would still come to 17.6% of property owners being served by the other 82% who would get exactly nothing of value except congestion, noise, and a public nuisance. Eco-businesses that we enjoy and promote will now be destroyed. So therefore, the pier is not a benefit to Delafield. The pier is a liability for Delafield. Years ago, we adapted the motto that good ecology is good business. Bad ecology is a very bad business. Indeed, squandering so much that could be put to better use and talents, whether it would be pathways or pickleball courts or enhancing police and fire departments or all the other things we know the city needs. The great environmentalist Aldo Leopold said that humankind needs a land ethic to protect the environment. Well, we need a fiscal ethic to protect the environment as well, and perhaps Delafield needs a water ethic. If you try None to wrap it up, here. please. Thank you so much. Please go to our website or take one of our hand handouts. Thank you from the Defenders of St. John's Bay, and thanks for hearing me out. Thank you for your comments. Who'd like to be next? Sir, right there, you were first. Whoever gets the quickest hand up is who I go with. <laughs> My name is Carol McAllister. Can you spell your last name, please? M C capital A double L I S as in Sam T E R. I live at 1925 Moraine N Drive in the city of Delafield. I am the treasurer of Defenders of St. John's Bay. We have a bank account opened with a number of substantial checks. We have approval from the IRS with a 401c3 status as a tax-exempt nonprofit so that donations can be subtracted from tax returns. Although I do not live on the lake, I became the treasurer of Defenders because I am disturbed by spending public money to benefit a very small number of Delafield residents. This development is doubly undesirable because it will disturb a protected area of the lake, a lake that belongs to all of us. I ask you to reject this use of tax money to benefit a few and damage the lake. If you would like to join our cause, please see me. I'll give you all the information you need to make a donation. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who'd like to be next, sir? It's my first time here. My name is Paul McAllister. No relative to oh. the other one. Spelled Thanks the same for clarifying way. that. <laughs> and uh, I live in uh, 817 uh, Milwaukee Street. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. Um, and I'll, I'd like to share my concerns, which are mostly fiscal, although I certainly uh, understand the environmental concerns as well. Um, my sense is that um, perhaps we don't have a good understanding of the project costs its initial costs and its ongoing costs. I have a background, that was my career was in project management. And when I see a 50% increase in an ask for a budget, it suggests to me that um, our budgetary quotes perhaps weren't over the target. In corporate life, you only ever got one ask. I feel like we're having our one ask now and we haven't even started. I know, I'm hoping we wouldn't be having more I also, and, and thank you, Mr. Hafner, for the information. <clears throat> um, I did talk uh, and exchange some messages about the soft costs and um, things like maintenance, winterizing, care and maintenance of the access area, lighting, pr potential provisioning of handicap and community policing and so forth. It's not free. Must, must cost something. And it's not mentioned in the budget that I see. 
And as you're aware, there's a, a group of the communities appealing the permit and, re and retain legal counsel. And my concern that this, if this gets down the road a little bit, that the city will get drawn into an expensive and protracted dispute. And um, that, as soon as you start that, you hemorrhage a lot of money once you get legal counsel involved. And that would be not nice. Um, the other concern is, and someone mentioned, sorry, I didn't mean to repeat, that it's really only a project that benefits for four months of the year um, for, a, for a section of the community. And we just have so many other things here that um, would, in, would actually benefit the entire community. So um, I'd ask you that uh, you reject this request, at least until we understand the total cost, and we only have one ask. And um, ideally, I'd like you to look at other projects that would benefit the community, <clears throat> the broader community. So thank you very much. Thank you for the comments. OK, who'd like to be next? <coughs> Come on up. My name is Sharon Cracklow. I live at 2220 Key Point Lane, city of Delafield. I would like to speak. Can you please spell your last name? Cracklow, K-R-A-K-L-O-W. I would like to refute one point that the two previous speakers made. The, uh, the lake is not used only for four months. Most people who use the lake extensively use it from May to some of us till October. So that's six months much more than the three or four months that some people state. I have lived in the city of Delafield since 1970. I have spent every one of those years spending time on the lake, using the lake, and my husband and I have often said that it's a, a real shame that there's no way to walk to the downtown Delafield businesses, restaurants, stores, uh, places to go when you're out on the lake. Some of us don't live on the lake and go out for day or the afternoon or better part of the weekend and it would be nice to be able to walk into town to get a dinner or a snack or to do a bit of shopping and this would expose all of those businesses to an increased number of people we have a lot of people that launch their boats at the park and at Bleecker Street every day who don't live on the lake we have people who have friends who come and look at the lake and and go around and it would be a nice way to show them what a beautiful beautiful city we have and I also am aware that there is infrastructure there already at the site where people could use bathrooms, there's walking paths, it's already policed. I think those are probably null arguments that it would cost a lot of extra because the, the police are out on the lake anyway for other reasons, observing, watching for violators, etc. And they already patrol the park-like area that we have down at the end of St. John's Bay. And the path is there, the, the markings are there for boats to go in and out. Already boats can go in and out and do go in and out. Every time we've done that, gone into St. John's Bay to the end just to, to sightsee and look around and enjoy an afternoon on the lake, there's other boats that are there already. So I, for one, would like to see this pier built. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who'd like to be next? Come on up. I am Ronald Nelson, uh, 2215 Key Point Lane, <clears throat> over by Zastros Bay. I'd like to speak to the environmental issue here. Um, I have fox, muskrats, um, deer, you name it, all the animals. I have a painted turtle, snapping turtles, traversing my land and going on the shore and so forth. And when I get in the boat in the summertime, I go out in the bay and there's all the party boats tied up floating patios everywhere, a lot of traffic, and uh, I have yet to see any interference with wildlife. As a matter of fact, we had a beautiful otter at our place this winter. And uh, after the boats leave on the weekend, when the, you go out there on a Tuesday night, you can cast your line, just troll along, jigging a little bit, and you'll get a bass just like that. It's fantastic bass fishing. So I disagree with any of this environmental issue. 
that my wife and I moved here 15 years ago because we like the up north feel and the beauty of the lake, and I'm very much an environmentalist, but I can see absolutely no effect on any of the animals that live around me. So I'm pro the uh, project. Thank you for the comments. Yep. Who'd like to be next? Come on up. Jim Ellsworth, 2831 Sylvester Drive. And I would like to echo those comments and urge you to vote for this project. This has been vetted by the DNR, so there is no environmental concerns. I'm probably the, one of the only people here that uses the lake all the time. I have literally walked the entire lake in snowshoes all around it. I walked from our house to the island and back. I've ice fished. I've gone through every possible place on this lake, including the channels and St. John's Bay. This is an inclusive lake, not an exclusive lake. For us to shut down a portion with no environmental concerns is ridiculous. This is a project worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who'd like to be next? Come on up. are not here, so I have to do my talking point for them. Susie Thompson, 700 Milwaukee Street. I want to talk to you about elephant memories. And this is in honor of my mom, Bobby Kentis Krieger, who passed away on February 5th. We were talking a lot about elephant memories in reference to the fish hatchery and the history of Delafield. Mom was married to Ted Kentis, who died on St. Patrick's Day in 1983. So she was a resident of Delafield for most of her life. She was my mom or stepmom for 35 years. St. John's Bay, if you have elephant memories, St. John's Bay has been protected by the DNR since the 1960s. A lot of information has been provided to council and for those of you who live on the lake and enjoy the lake, those of us who don't live on the lake also enjoy the lake and we want to continue to do so. Additional monies and funds that will be needed to support a pier whose price is increasing and will continue to increase because that's what's happening to material cost. We have not talked about additional supporting funds to make it possible to have and enjoy that pier. Some of it would be that you cannot see that pier readily from the street. So when we talk about the police being able to watch and support what's happening there, if you would please note, unless you get out of a vehicle and you walk onto the isthmus between St. John's Pond and the lake, it's difficult to see that location. However, if we were to take down some of those trees in that beautiful wooded area that is just north of the pier and take down 75 to 80%, oh, I know a lot of them are dead or they're diseased or they're old, and, but 75 to 80% would give a clear view for the police. People coming to visit have made a point of telling me there are not enough parking spaces there for what they would like to see because if their friends come down to the lake and they want excuse me, come down to this new pier location and want to pick them up, they need places to park. Yes, the post office is closed as of noon on Saturday and it's closed on Sunday, but are we suggesting that the public is to go across the street and park? So are we going to increase the parking to be 20, 24 spots? And then are we going to make a six to eight foot wide asphalt pathway down there so we have ADA accessible access for people who are on walkers, have difficulty walking, such as I do, although you don't see it. 
but I do. Elephant memories refer to those of us that have been told things and learned things and have attended and participated in what's happening. Later, people write things down, they write notes, some things are logged, and all of you can look up information from the DNR. Sometimes younger people, interns, or people that are new in any profession Can you wrap have, it up, Susie, please? Thank you, I will. They have memories of things that are more new. I ask all of you to put on pause this project, if not outright reject it. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Come on up. My name is Jessica Stelfluk. Can you spell that? Yeah. That's S a selfie. <laughs> S-T-E-L-P-F-L-U-G. And then 2103 Key Point Lane, City of Delfield. Um, the public pier makes the lake more welcoming place for everyone. My husband and I are building our home in downtown Delafield. Um, we are off lake residents, so we have a great place to pull off the lake when we are boating. The pier will give us access to parks, restrooms, trash disposal, and um, access to shopping and restaurants. Um, please approve this pier and make the lake more welcoming place. It belongs to Delafield residents, not those just to live on the lake. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to be next? Ma'am? My name is Fran Bills, and I live at 1522 Milwaukee Street, Delafield. The last name is B's and Boy, I L L S is in Sam. Uh, I do not live directly out. I'm on Milwaukee Street. I have a nice little view, um, uh, but I, I do not have uh, lake access nor deeded access, but I'm a resident. So um, I am opposed to the pier, and, and briefly I'll give you two reasons. Many have stated why uh, they are opposed. Um, one reason is, I don't understand, the DNR did not do an environmental impact statement when they approved these six piers, which I find very odd, because in the past they have designated St. John's Bay as being environmentally sensitive, They've told the city that there are special limitations on uh, weed whacking in the bay uh, because it is so shallow. Uh, so, I mean, and, and they did not take into account uh, mo the boats, the transportation going across the bay to the piers. They just looked at the piers and the position that they would be in. I, I find that very odd. Um, also, I think it's fiscally irresponsible. As a taxpayer, you're, you're talking about building six piers, one of which is apparently going to be designated to be used entirely by St. John's Military Academy, St. John's Northwestern Military Academy. Why should I, a taxpayer, be paying to have a pier that I'm not going to be able to use and none of the other taxpayers, just a private school? I find that fiscally irresponsible. Why? Why, why are we doing that? Um, and um, other comments, I'm not going to repeat what others have said, but those are two of my concerns, both environmental and fiscal. And thank you for can, taking into consideration our concerns. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Sir, come on up. My Tim, name is Tim Holt. I live at 731 Mill Street. 
My parents bought that house when I was in third grade in 1960. So I think I can say, if I read by the talk here, I'm the longest one that's been on the lake. I've seen many changes. Right now what I see in St. John's Bay is a lot of people that are using it with canoes, kayaks, wakeboards, because that's a safe place to be on the lake. The main part of the lake is great for speedboats. I love speedboats, but they're not in a place to be bringing in and out of St. John's Bay. It's gonna disrupt the fishing that's up there, the spawning of the fish. It's gonna wreck uh, part of the shorelines of the, or not the, it's gonna be noisy with the people coming in, especially with teenagers. I mean, when I was a teenager, I liked to go out in a boat and party around and make a lot of noise and noise carries on the lake. So everybody that's on the shore on the other side is gonna hear the noise probably at nighttime when they're out partying and probably drinking when they shouldn't be. And that's just a fact of life. I think it shouldn't have the piers over there. I think the people that can't afford the speed boats should have a place to where they can bring their kids and fish off the pier there and fish in the by the dam, if people can have the kayaks and the wakeboards, they have a place, place to go and use it. So other people can use the lake other than people that can afford the speedboats. A lot of people can't. That's all I have to say, thank you. Appreciate your comments. Who'd like to be next? Who'd like to be next, sir, come on up. Good evening. Uh, my name is Frank Pasternak. I live with my family at 2909 Sylvester Drive in the city. Last name is P-A-S-T-E-R-N-A-K. Sadly, I think this is uh, an issue that's been uh, amplified a little bit by uh, a vocal minority. Uh, I'm not really interested in being here tonight, uh, but I'm here because uh, I support this dot, uh, and so does my family. Uh, we, we use the lake all the time. Uh, we love the lake, and we're very much in favor of this uh, for many of the reasons stated, which I won't go over. Uh, I will point out a couple of things. Both bathrooms and trash disposal were mentioned, and I'll tell you that uh, that should certainly help keep the lake cleaner if people have access to a bathroom nearby. Also, uh, for emergencies, if that pier is there, it's a lot easier to get to uh, if you're in the area. Uh, I'm going to also add, uh, there are 100 boat slips and 60 private homes down there. Uh, and, and so I can't imagine that in this no-wake zone, uh, and it is a no-wake zone, that it's going to do uh, any sort of damage to anything that might be protected. Because I have yet to hear any th of any actual thing that's protected other than the environment. Uh, what, what is it exactly that's being protected uh, from, from boaters trying to use our lakes? And that's what the DNR is for. Uh, one of its stated purposes is to ensure that all of us have the right to use these lakes. And I think what you're hearing is it's not just us on the lake who aren't close by, because if you're close by, I get it. You already have access to downtown, so what do you care uh, for anybody else? Um, uh, and for people who are off the lake so that they have a place where they can take a break, pull in, and use our businesses. This is for all of us. This is really for the citizens and the businesses of Delafield. And if you want more businesses coming into our town, which I think we do, this is going to do nothing but help the tax base. And I don't think, uh, I think the budget is sixty or $75,000 in that range is going to do any kind of significant damage. Uh, and in fact, I think it's a reasonable investment to make in our community for all of us. Thanks. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Sir, come on up. Hi, my name is Tom Siegert, S-E-E-G-E-R-T. I live at 2120 Evergreen Lane. I've been a lake resident, city of Delafield, for most of my life. My folks built a house on uh, the lake back in the 1960s. So I've seen a lot of change happen in the, uh, on the lake as well as off. And I think that 
to give a showcase for the city of Delafield, a place where people who are coming from out of town or even lake residents to come into town via the waterway would be a plus. And I know that St. John's Bay isn't the deepest. I've tried to get up it with my deck boat, so I know it's not the greatest bay to get into. So I probably wouldn't be using it with a deck boat, but if you have a pontoon boat or whatever, it is navigable. But I, I am in favor of this because I think it would provide easy access to downtown Delafield and offer some new opportunities for those people who come to the lake to enjoy the great city of Delafield. Thank you. Great. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Come on up, ma'am. I'm Kathy Patasson, P-T-A-C-I-N. I live at 708 St. John's Drive. Um, before I begin, I would like to distribute for your consideration uh, pictures that were taken less than two weeks ago when lake levels were high and the native vegetation not appreciably evident yet uh, in the bay. They will show the impact a single pontoon had on the bay near the site of the proposed pier, if I may approach the council. Please carefully consider your position. Allowing citizens tax dollars to fund this project, and I am referring specifically to the initial funds approved for the pier. At a time when the city's voters have just approved an annual fee of approximately $400 per household, on average, to imp improve our fire department service, they will now be providing thousands of dollars more for the boat pier, which will benefit only a privileged few who have access to the lake, mostly those who already have homes on the lake. There's no time set for how long a boat can sit in one of those piers. You can have a boat sit there all day. The police are not going to watch that, nor are they going to be monitoring the size of the craft coming into the bay. <clears throat> Has the general public even been well informed that their tax dollars will be used for this project? And this marina will likely not generate revenue for the city in the long run when the costs are added up year after year. And I'm not going to get into the use of the pier and how many months um, there will be up up. up keep for the pier and there will be added costs for maintenance, lighting, and whatever. The building of this pier, though, will ultimately destroy the beauty and the integrity of the bay, which is currently enjoyed by so many constituents of the general population, including visitors. Think of the 4th of July, how people just love to sit there. Before I go on, I'd like to... I, I need you to try to wrap it up, please. I want to clarify that I'm aware that there's going to be tax deduction offsetting this $400 business. I hope that'll also be annual, but I, that's another discussion. I notice a lot of folks here tonight from Zastro Bay area. I do find it ironic that when our neighbors on the lake's east shore 
objected to the restructuring of the old Seven Seas into a convalescent facility, citing increased traffic and noise, their concerns were addressed promptly and the matter dropped almost immediately without fanfare. There wasn't even an environmental issue jeopardizing the integrity of the lake at that site. So I will say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Pam, I really need you to try to wrap it up so everybody gets a turn, please. And the evidence is right in front of you, right in front of you. I hope you will stand up for the wildlife, read the science, and do the right thing tonight. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Who would like to be next? Come on up. Karen Reinders, 2103 Key Point Lane. I don't want to repeat what's been said. I just want to say I'm for the dock. Thank you very much. Who would like to be next? Who would like to be next? Come on up. Tom Yoss, Y-O-S-S. -S. What is your first name, sir? Tom. Tom. 2845 Sylvester Drive, mm -hmm. Ireland. Uh, I'm going to say I'm in support, full support of the peer. Um, I'm not going to reiterate what everyone just uh, said. Uh, however, there's a lot of comments about the DNR and the environmental impact that have been brought up tonight. I'd like to make known the fact this has already been passed. The DNR approved it. I don't know if they did just cause uh, for their approval, but they approved it, and it's a done deal. And you're just asking for more money at, at this point. So I don't know what why the rehashing of this over and over again about the environmental impact and the DNR. That doesn't make any sense at all to me. And I'm in full support of the pier, and I'd like to see it go in for the benefit of downtown Delafield and for the residents of uh, Nagawick Lake, as well as the residents off the lake. Thank you. Great, thank you for the comments. Who would like to go, sir? <clears throat> Good evening, Phil Casson, 1208 Genesee Street. I do believe this pier should be, re at the very least, reconsidered, slowed, if not stopped, for several reasons, and the biggest reason is just regulations. First of all, the DNR, if you weren't at the DNR meeting that was held online, it was disappointing to say the very least because decades, literally decades of letters from experienced DNR department people, career people, commented since the 19, late 1980s that this is an area that's vital to the health of the lake for fishing purposes, as well as just, uh, it's also a, a, a sump, basically, for many of the sediments that are in the lake. And as a result, those years of experience were pretty much denied by the lady that was running the DNR hearing. If you weren't at the hearing meeting, you didn't see it, but she was about uh, late 20s at her most, and had only been with the DNR for about a year. People from the DNR with experience said they had concerns. They were squelched. They were told to be quiet. When people in this audience and others had gone back to the DNR, the DNR people said, we, we can't comment. They were squelched. Secondly, regulation. There's no rules or regulations to how this will be run. And as far as I've seen, very little coordination with the park and rec, because I don't even think the hours of the park coordinate with the goal of when this dock would even be open. Secondly, regarding the parking thing, I realize people will not be parking a boat and launching it there, but what's to prevent them from picking up people? And I know the post office has been suggested as a possible place, but that's a limited time offer, because that's going to be gone. There will be condominiums there before too long. So regulation, it really needs to be thought through how this would even be limited. The amount of boats in there, how long they can park, the lighting, all of those things. To be honest, I, I don't think it, it should not be a large part of the equation about 
the people that live there as much as it is for the health of the entire community. And that's what it is. This lake is the gem, the jewel for the whole city of Delafield. And if it's, if it's uh, compromised, that's going to hurt us all. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Come on up. <coughs> Can I get you to actually state that into the microphone, please? Jane Hausman, 608 St. John's Drive, Delafield. Thank you. Has anybody ever been in that bathroom that we're all talking about? It's a piece of crap. And pretty soon, you will be saying, we need a new bathroom. Um, I can understand why those people back there don't mind, because there's not going to be a parking lot in their backyard, like there will be in mine, and there won't be people peeing on their yard like there will be on mine, because there's no other place to go. Half the time that bathroom's locked, it's filthy, and it's um, unisex. I think you should reconsider this as a really stupid move. Thank you for the comments. Who else would like to be next? Going once. Oh, come on up. Oh, I'm sorry, didn't see you, but come on up. I didn't see you behind the pole. <laughs> Good evening. My name's Mary Radel, R-A-D-L-E, 700 St. John's Drive. Um, I would like to concur with all the people that are opposed to the pier. And um, I did want to say it is a no-wake zone, but we watch people ex exceed that speed all the time. We watch people spew sediment when their boats get stuck. We kind of check and see how long they'll spew sediment out of their motor. It's not good. Um, and also, of course, the safety concerns have been mentioned. And again, the additional problem with having no rules, as I understand it, they're gonna be added as needed. And I don't know if any of you have parented or managed people, but it's way easier to take away rules than add them after the fact. And it's certainly fraught with potential for people to contest rules that are put in after the fact, because as I understand, you could, I don't know, you could park your boat overnight or for extended periods of time. So anyway, I'm uh, adamantly opposed, as is my husband, and would like you to consider that. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Ma'am, over here. Deborah Mulberry, 2370, Lakeview Court, Delafield. Can you please spell your first and last name just so I make sure I have the right spelling? D-E-B-R-A-M-U-L-B-E-R-R-Y. I don't live on the bay, but I do live on the lake. And what was the address again? 2370, Lakeview Court, in Delafield. I wasn't prepared to be here tonight, so I don't have any prepared notes. I hope, try not to babble on. Uh, most of my comments have already been said here before. I oppose the um, the peers, and mostly because I don't think there's been a whole lot of thought that's gone into it for a lot of reasons that everybody else has brought, brought up already, so I, I won't be repetitive. There's so many other costs that are going to go in to these peers if you approve it. It's just going to be continuing to be another drain on the taxpayers here of Delafield. I truly don't see how five open piers are gonna bring enough interest into the downtown <coughs> shops and businesses that it's gonna offset that. Um, I also think about all the other costs that I think that this city needs to consider. When I walked up the stairs to come to the meeting, well, all those stairs are in disarray. It, it, it's a little embarrassing that the front door to our city looks the way it does. Again, it was mentioned the referendum. We can't even uh, hire enough fire protectors, uh, firemen, to keep us safe in our homes. Anyway, there's, I, I could go on. I am absolutely opposed to this as it stands right now. It needs more conversation. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. <clears throat> Ma'am, up back there. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Kim Holt, H-O-L-T. I live at 731 Mill Street in Delafield. Um, my grandkids go swimming out there, and we have swam across the bay and back, and there are safety issues. We have little kids that live on the side of us that swim there, and a lot of wakeboards and kayaks. I'm afraid somebody's going to get hit as one of those people come through the town lickety split and not seeing the little kids. I'm sorry, but that is a safety issue that is close to my heart. And I don't want to see accident like that happen. So that's my opinion. Great. Thank you. Sir, come on up. Um, Jim Nelson, 604 St. John's Drive, uh, here in, in the city. Um, my property immediately is uh, next to this project, and uh, I stand, my wife and I stand wholeheartedly against it, because you're not just providing five slips for people from the other side of the lake or whatever to come and shop in the city. You're building... And you're building the, the basis of a marina that's going to have to grow over time. So you're bringing people in. They have to park if they're going to go out and fish on this structure. It's not just for the pontoons that may or may not come regularly. Um, I, we've put uh, our thoughts in writing, and I've given each of you uh, through your email what our thoughts are and our argument against uh, the peer. So if you would read that, I'll uh, uh, not take any more of your time. And I do appreciate you looking into this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who would like to be next? Come on up. I'm Sarah Reardon, 2019 Hillside Court in Delafield. I wasn't going to speak tonight, and I wasn't prepared to speak tonight, but there is a basic issue that hasn't been addressed by a soul here yet tonight. For those of us that do not live on the lake, there are very few places where we can peacefully enjoy a view of the lake. You can pay to get into Nagawaki Park or purchase a sticker, or you can view it from downtown near the ponds, off the fishing pier, and have a quiet moment there. That is all we have if we don't live on the lake. Those of us that put boats in at Bleecker Street, and yes, I put a kayak in there, aren't going to go to that pier. It's right next to Bleecker Street, practically. Why would you put a boat in at Bleecker Street to go a few blocks to this pier to go downtown. You could walk from Bleecker Street to downtown. I cannot see the increase in business be making it worth the money. I don't want to reiterate what other people have said, but from a purely aesthetic viewpoint, for the majority of the city that does not live on the lake, consider our needs. Consider the quiet, peaceful bay and the view that we enjoy, not just on 4th of July, but every day, every weekday, every morning. We don't want a view of a marina and boats coming and going. This is our one quiet place to view the lake without paying to get in the park. Please don't take that away from us. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Who would like to be next? Come on up. Oh, Jackie, you have one? I have one. Okay, I'll, you're, I'll, you're I'll, next. I'll wait. <laughs> I almost forgot. <laughs> uh, I'm Deborah Ellsworth, 2831 Sylvester Drive, and I am here in favor of the peers. I think that when I read everything that there's been presented, mm -hmm that when the DNR approved it, I felt that that was what we needed to hear. I know that some people are thinking that that's money that's going to be spent for just a select few. You know, the city has services all over, things that I don't use. I don't use a dog park. I don't have a dog. 
I don't use a library. I do read, but I don't have, I don't use the library. There's so many services that not everybody does use. But we've met people on the lake that are launching and staying for the day. They would love to go and park downtown, near downtown and get off, go eat lunch. I don't think they're picking people up. I don't know where all that's coming from. But I do think that this is a service that not only people on the water, on the lake, but people that are using our lake, that are launching, not at just Bleecker Street, that they'll use and they'll go downtown and everybody will be able to enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. <clears throat> Jackie. I'm speaking for uh, Chloe and Ross Schneider, and I will spell it. Um, they are at 834 Mill Street in Delafield. Ross had open heart surgery. He's doing very well, but can't make it. Uh, the last name is W-A-N-D-S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. Um, and they have been residents of Delafield um, for most of their 80 plus years. Um, good evening and thank you for serving the city of Delafield. Recently, uh, the Juan Schneiders uh, emailed, or actually snail mailed each council member. Uh, you should have received a letter from them opposing the peer project. We trust that all of you read the letter. They continue to support um, opposition status. They condense it to two points. One, police policy. The peer was requested by the city administration um, this is city policy, excuse me. The peer was requested by city administration. What they would like to see is a nonpartisan study group composed of city, citizens, professionals, um, and others um, that was not established. They did not see a questionnaire or any um, open house regarding that um, involving city residents. This peer has done a brilliant job of dividing the city. Uh, the city applied for a peer um, structure permit, but the um, actual impact on the aquatic uh, plants and fish and other animals was not considered in the approval process. Their concerns for fiscal is the total overall cost, what yearly add-on expenditures have not been considered. That has been discussed. I won't list it. Our city budget is tight. We need conservative fiscal expenditures. The bottom line, uh, if we had an abundance of dollars, this still might not be the best project. Our economy is also stressed, and they're worried about the inflation of costs. What the Juan Schneiders are asking is a pause so that all in the city of Delafield can actually communicate and find common ground on this project. Um, they feel rules were not established, so they're asking the Common Council to vote no and investigate um, further. Thank you. Thanks for filling in. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on up. I'm going to face the whole crowd, not just the left. Good evening. My name is Scott Botcher, B-O-T-C-H-E-R. Tom knows where to find me, 704 St. John's Drive. Um, I prepared some marks for this, this evening. While other individuals have environmental concerns about this proposal, my concerns are largely organizational and financial. Voters in Delafield were asked to approve an excess levy referendum of approximately a quarter million dollars annually to backfill a revenue shortfall caused by levy mismanagement. Citizens were told that critical and core municipal services were at risk, and even police officers in uniform were on street corners passing out information and encouraging support. Given the city's inability to generate meaningful income, either through levy modification, alternative revenue sources, or impactful expenditure reduction to compensate for the revenue shortfall caused by this levy mismanagement, the excess levy referendum was probably our best option. Notwithstanding, apparently, we have enough money that we can make an estimated initial direct expenditure of $45,000 or more, 
on a pier which many would argue is not a core municipal function. Taxpayers, every one of your constituents, write significant checks every single year to make up for this levy mismanagement, but we write these checks to financially support the core municipal services the city should provide, not optional <coughs> expenditures like this. You as a council prioritize our expenditures, and if you think making an initial expenditure of $45,000 or more on a peer reflects the optimum use of our very finite capital dollars, you may do that. To the contrary, this expenditure is not core to our mission, the mission your voters passed an excess levy referendum to support. The city has a long list of pressing capital needs which are primary to its function. The front of City Hall looks like, well, kind of a mess. Curb, gutter, and catch basins to handle our stormwater require repair or upgrade. As I walk here today, here's part of a curb. Multiple crosswalks downtown and bridge joints need timely attention. Public works rolling stock needs improvement. Street degeneration upgrades as identified in your PASER analysis far exceed existing budgets alone. The list of core capital needs is significant. If you were amending the budget to do any of these capital expenditures, I would stand here, congratulate you, and encourage you. In the end, for those of you who claim to be fiscal conservatives, and some who certainly like to campaign as such, a vote in favor of this budget amendment recommendation will remove any doubt that you very clearly are not. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Can you keep your All right. Anybody else? Who else would like to speak? Come on up. My name is Lisa Auerbach, A-U-E-R, B as in boy, A-C-H, 2370 Woodland Park Drive. I'm not going to take a lot of your time because there's been so much said today. I just want to let you know that I am 100% for the peers. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Have anybody else? Anybody else that would like to speak? Going once. Going twice. Citizens' comments are now closed. Okay, we will go on to six, the uh, consent agenda. Uh, 6A, approval of a write-off of uncollectible invoices and uncollectible personal property tax. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All right, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. We'll move on to number seven, boards, committees, and commission reports. Uh, a licenses, A1, discussion and possible action regarding approval of, a, of six 2023-2024 alcohol beverage retail licenses to be granted on June 15th, 2023, as required by Wisconsin State Statute 125.51C. I'll move to approve the uh, liquor licenses as presented. I'll second. <clears throat> Who had the second? Okay. Did you need to add anything, Molly? I did not. It's pretty standard. Just the, the first six that got their applications in correctly on time. Great. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Passes. We're on to B, Planning Commission. It, there has not been a uh, Planning Commission meeting since our last Council meeting, so I don't have updates on, on new activity at the meetings, but this is some... Uh, uh, list of four items related to the Beacon Hill development, uh, the first of which was directly motioned by the Plan Commission um, on April 26th to approve the, um, is it the final plats? Yeah, to approve the final plats as presented by the developer, um, contingent upon a few things which are B, C, and D. Um, and so they're kind of, not kind of, they're very much related to one another. Um, they just needed to go through the approvals for the um, drainage easements and the uh, sewer easement as well as the, uh, um, I think it's a public access easement for the sidewalks. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, item B2A for the final plat um, for Beacon Hill of Delafield. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Abstentions passes. And I hear music. <laughs> <clears throat> so the next three are, are again, these were contingencies that um, the, the developer worked with staff and the different departments to get these other agreements in place. And as Tom says otherwise, um, that's been done to everyone's satisfaction. So I'll make a motion to approve the drainage easement, easement as well as the stormwater management agreement for Beacon Hill. Second. Second. So is that just uh, B2, uh, B2B? Correct. Got it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. And moving on to B2C, um, this is uh, for the sanitary sewer easement. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve that as well for Beacon Hill. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. And B2D, um, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, public access e easement for Beacon Hill, and this has to deal with the sidewalks in there. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. And, and I'll just note that um, our next meeting is on May 31st for the Planning Commission. That's the last Wednesday of the month, just after Memorial Day. And as or when, um, the other development on St. John's property goes through its progress. You'll see similar types of activity for them. So I'll, we'll have a good summary coming up. I don't know if that's on our next agenda or not, but look online for the packet. And that's it for Planning Commission. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, Lake Welfare, Mr. Price. Yes, uh, the Lake Welfare met on Wednesday, May 10th. Uh, one of the Pieces of business was election of officers for the next year. Uh, Mike Hausman will continue as chairman of the group. Uh, some of the other things we discussed, uh, the Lake Welfare Committee on the webpage, we made some changes to make that a bit clearer. Uh, biggest thing we discussed was the dredging at the mouth of the Bark River. Our bids are, are, are in fact, I think they're all in now. They were fortunately lower than last year, so the project is looking good. Uh, we may be meeting in the next week or two on an emergency meeting to uh, address those bids. Uh, the annual lake awareness meeting was set for September 13th at the Nagawaka Lake Yacht Club. And then we decided to write an article for the Delafield Field C C C Communicator on wakeboard boating. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. I uh, will move on to D, Park and Rec. Mr. Um, Schaefer. No, no meeting, no report this month, but I do want to mention that this Sunday, May 21st, is the uh, Park and Rec Commission's uh, park walk that uh, we go on site to review all of, all of the parks. Um, anybody and everybody is welcome to join us. We'll be inspecting the parks, you know, looking for any, uh, any needs in terms of repairs or improvements that the parks need to be Made. We'll be meeting at uh, St. John's Park, 9 a.m. Uh, on Sunday for that. So feel free to join us. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, Public Works, Mr. Grimmer. Uh, no meeting, no report. <clears throat> Moving right along, Delahart, Mr. Eicher. Our next meeting is tomorrow night at 5.30 at uh, the plant. Okay. G, Police Commission, Ms. Valdi. No meeting, no report. H, Library Board, Ms. Henry. Yeah, we met um, last week and voted on a new president, new VP, since we had um, a change in uh, members. Uh, we also approved a public comment policy and went over the survey results for preparing to um, create the strategic plan um, going forward. And um, the library is currently hiring for a new librarian, so that is currently open um, for accepting applications, so if you're interested. Great, thank you very much. Okay, move on to I, Zoning Board of Appeal. <clears throat> I heard something's coming your way, just so you know. Woohoo! <laughs> possibly, possibly. Okay, Promotion and Tourism Commission. Mr. Schaefer. Uh, we met last week and uh, reappointed Fred Marrero as our chair and Larry Firm as our vice chair. 
And uh, we also made the, the transfer uh, of $145,000 from the state tourism tax funds to the city to, pro to support uh, funding our trail development and uh, quality of life projects. Great, thank you very much. Okay, Kay, the Country Fire and Rescue Commission, uh, not aware of a publicly noticed meeting. L, Lake Country Fire and Rescue Board, Mr. Grimmer. Uh, no meeting since our last. Our next meeting is this Wednesday at 5, Station 42. Thank you much. M, Dear Management Committee, Ms. Henry. Uh, there has not been a meeting since our last, and our, they are meeting tomorrow. Yeah, we have the, we need to switch that. Um, it yeah. should be Dirk. Yeah. Instead of Miss Henry. Oh. And I'm not on, um, yeah, that, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I think I had a switch for the last meeting and uh, didn't move forward, so I apologize for that. No worries. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to number eight, unfinished business. A, discussion of possible action regarding resolution 2023-09. A resolution of the Common Council of the City of Delafield, Wisconsin, amending the 2022 capital budget to increase the budget for St. John's Bay Public Dock or boat <laughs> access to downtown. Project number 2022-01-01 by $29,500 from $60,000 to $89,500 with the city's local match share after grant funding increased by $14,750 from the $30,000 to $44,750. So a lot of numbers. Basically here tonight we're voting on $14,750 and the whole project is a 50-50 match. So the city pays half and the grantor pays, would pay the other half. Tom, did you wanna go over the information you had in the packet? Yeah, I'll just say that um, you know we intentionally wrote the um, uh, agenda item as, as detailed as possible, given the uh, um, the um, contentiousness of this project, to make sure that it was very clear uh, what we're voting on. Uh, it is increasing the budget from sixty thousand dollars to eighty nine thousand five hundred dollars, uh, which would increase the city share from thirty thousand. Uh, to $44,750, so as Kent mentioned, an increase of $14,750. Uh, resolution 2023-09 is prepared for you to accomplish that if you choose to do so, and this it does represent a budget amendment, and by state statutes, uh, that does require a supermajority, uh, and so for our purposes, uh, five affirmative votes would be required to approve uh, this budget amendment. Great, thank you very much. So, just a little history here. You know, we've this was first proposed uh, mid-year around 2020, and it's been discussed at multiple times at multiple meetings. And um, uh, the last uh, annual council meeting for the 2023 budget, uh, the motion passed to go ahead with the pier. Um, since that time. Uh, the costs have increased as inflation and other things have caused the need for an adjustment as well as a decision to have an outside contractor install the pier as opposed to having public works do it. So that's basically where the $14,750 comes from. Um, you know, there's a number of different uh, items that uh, were brought up tonight um, and I thought I might uh, go after or try to address at least a few of them. You know, a lot of things hinge around this DNR letter. And the DNR letter, you know, was one of those things that early on in the discussions, you know, was felt as a very important thing, that it would be difficult to move forward with this project. Um, some citizens, certainly in the area, and even some older people, felt that without the DNR's approval, that, um, you know, we were kind of spinning our wheels. But we did receive that approval. And a couple of the key things that you know, citizens have talked about is the environmental uh, impact. Um, and if anybody has read this letter, I know it's been posted online, it's been on the city website, I've seen it being emailed around. I mean, I'm just gonna quote three short things here. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the page number is, but I'm number five. 
Proposed project, project, if structured in accordance with the permit, will not adversely affect water quality, will not increase water pollution in surface water, and will not cause environmental pollution as defined in a state statute. And then number seven, the proposed project will not impact wetlands if constructed in accordance with the permit. And then under number 17, they go through a series of different division groups within the DNR that all give input to the project, including uh, the one I'm gonna highlight here, which is the water quality biologist and fisheries biologist, who are also asked to comment on the secondary impacts of the increased boating traffic through the bay as a result of the additional slips. Both indicated that the area is already regularly navigated with evidence of prop scours and residential slips located in the bay. The slow no wake will help reduce impacts. The water quality biologists also indicated that the installation of the municipal pier could attract larger boats on the bay, causing additional sediment and plant uh, uh, displacement, as well as additional prop making the designated route navigational buoys will help to reduce those impacts. So that's something that if you're familiar with coming down the bay, we have uh, a slow no wake buoy and then we have a channel marker, slow no wake buoy, then a channel marker. Um, seems to be good logic that when the Lake Welfare Committee proposes to the state um, uh, the, the uh, buoy placement plan, that we would go ahead and do that so that we would create a navigational path to and from the pier location, just like we have through the rest of St. John's Bay. But they're more or less saying here that, uh, you know, it, they're not, these slips, you know, will not really cause any, you know, environmental um, um, issues. Um, and like I said, they go through multiple different uh, topics here, and that is the one that I read to you where they had a suggestion for improvement, and I certainly don't see any reason why, you know, that shouldn't be something strongly considered by the Lake Welfare Committee. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you is uh, just remind you that, you know, there was a petition that was sent around uh, that was done by citizens, and we had over 150 signatures. Um, that were signed uh, for a dollar amount supporting the pier in excess of the total funds that are actually being requested here tonight and the cost of the total project. Um, and the other question somebody had brought up was about uh, the fiscal cost. So let's remind everybody the difference between a capital project and an operating uh, budget. You know, capital projects are things where we're buying an asset and basically uh, purchasing it. Operating costs are what we did our levy for. These are labor costs. These are expenses that are ongoing. It's a different bucket, right? And I know it's hard for citizens to often understand those two buckets, but they're two very distinct and different buckets. Um, this pier design um, really is foreseen to have little to no maintenance that's required. It's a floating pier design. It will not be taken out at the beginning or the end of each season. It'll be left in place as the uh, uh, pier in the, in the vicinity by the police boat uh, has been left in as well. So other than, you know, maybe a float going bad from a muskrat maybe eating into it or something, it's all aluminum, there's no painting, there really should be little to no maintenance that's gonna be required for this capital budget expenditure. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to, to mention, a lot of people had met, talked about, you know, there were no rules. So that's been brought up in other meetings in the past, uh, how the, the pier would operate. Um, and it has been discussed at the Lake Welfare Committee and actually to try and address those concerns that citizens had, uh, met with some folks down there at St. John's uh, as well as the police department. And I passed out to you some of the uh, guidelines that came one of two ways. Either it was previously discussed at a Lake Welfare Committee meeting, uh, they made no action, they made no motion, but they talked about the kind of things that they would think would be important there. Uh, it's for them to decide. They would decide in the future if the council did approve the full project as requested tonight, then it would be appropriate for them to try to take action, take public comment, and move forward with those list of rules um, and guidance. But generally speaking, you know, their prior thoughts have been to follow the rules of the existing park that are there. Um, the existing park, you know, has our restrictions. All city-owned parks 
shall be closed between one hour before, one half hour after sunset, and all city parks open at 7 a.m. You know, the guidelines that the Lake Welfare Committee had been t discussing was actually a little narrower than that, certainly in the morning hours. So there is a process to look at these rules. I passed out uh, the guidance to, to the council members here so you could see them. You know, no mm -hmm. overhead lighting, noise uh, would be based on the same, same city ordinances that we use for the St. John Park and Lake today. Uh, violation and citation, all city ordinances, laws would be enforced on a complaint basis, similar to any other park in the city of Delafield, and then go into some different signages uh, that were suggested. You know, and I think the most important one that I remember the Lake Welfare Committee and part of it was reflected in their minutes was a two-sided metal sign placed on the shore at the end of the gang ramp stating hours of operations and request that boaters be respectful of their neighbors. Um, I think that's a really important one. And we have just like we do in any other city park, the ability to, to monitor that. You know, no different monitoring at the pier than what we would monitor at any other park. Um, you know, the idea is that the uh, time limit for a boat to be on the pier would, uh, has been discussed at two hours. Whether it's two hours or three hours, the Lake Welfare Committee will make the decision. But the prior conversations what was that they thought two hours was a good place to start. So. That, that sign would basically say, you know, parking limit time is two hours. And it's really the honor system, I think, is what they were looking for when they're talking about the hours of operations there. Um, so you can go through some of the other signs. The police department had, a, I thought, a really good suggestion. You know, the police boathouse is right next to where this pier is going in. I mean, it's literally right next to it. They suggested that we put up um, the officers that we met with down there a sign, a colored sign, that basically says Delafield Police, so that anybody that would be using that pier as they're walking off would basically be looking right at the fact that they're next to the police boat uh, as a, uh, a possible way to help people realize that we have eyes on you or, you know, we're definitely, you know, this is an area where the police potentially hang out. So there's other things Lake Welfare might come up with, but I just wanted to share with you as those were some of the things they talked about in the past and some of the things that we had recently heard either from St. John's uh, or from the police department. <clears throat> um, and that's just kind of where I wanted to kind of start it off. I'm curious to hear what other people have to say about the project, capital budget expense. I, I, since there's a resolution already formulated to facilitate the fact we're gonna act on this, I'll just make a motion to approve resolution 2023-09. I'll second. So, I mean, with, with that, um, you know, I agree. This is something that's been, it's been talked about for a while. Um, we've gone through some pretty, uh, this isn't our first full house. Um, back when we this first hit our budget discussion back in 2020 or 2021. Um, and so it's gone, it's gone through the process. Um, and I think that the, the DNR's letter um, with 17 points is, is rather comprehensive. They mentioned the different experts that they consulted with this. Um, but aside from that, to address some of the other things that, you know, just my personal comments and some of my constituents' um, thoughts are, I mean, when I moved out here in 2000, I thought it was a little surprising that the city did not have an amenity like this for um, the fact that the city had created itself around the lake to protect and use the lake um, and enjoy the lake, um, that it didn't have uh, the ability to connect the east shore to the west shore um, and have a place for people to dock and patronize downtown. Um, and it's my impression that that was some of the intent behind the what's now the fishing pier, um, but regulations regarding what can be used uh, connected to an earth dam kind of caught us by surprise when that was finalized. And uh, so it can't be, you can't moor boats, boats to that. Um, but um, you know, a couple other things involved um, with this are that you know there is somewhere between. I'm not sure where the number. Somebody mentioned 100 piers in the in the bay or area, I should say. Um, if you do look, there's there's somewhere around 30 piers that are in St. John's Bay already, and this proposal, what we have here, is extending the length of one of them. Um, we've got two two slips in an existing pier, one of 30. We're talking about adding four more slips. 
Um, so in a relative scale of use abuse of the area, um, it's, it's, not the, uh, it's not the end of aquatic wildlife in, in Nagawika Lake. Um, but the other thing too, as far as who uses it, who benefits from it, who doesn't, um, this is not unlike dozens of amenities, somebody mentioned this before, um, that the city has and maintains in the park. I mean, we have one tennis court and it costs more than this and it costs um, somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars every every uh, eight to nine years to to resurface it. Um, uh, we've got basket and and that that's that's actually impactful on a neighbor. Um, I mean, they hear the tennis balls bouncing around, um, but they move next door to a park, and then a couple years later, a tennis court got installed. Um, we've got the same thing with the basketball court in Fireman's Park. Um, we just paid to resurface that, and that's an amenity that I've never used. Um, um, but I mean, it, the list goes on with um, with other types of things that the city um, puts in, maintains. Uh, the fishing pier right there is an, is an, is an additional one. Um, uh, I just I see it as something that's a, a desirable amenity for the the, the general public, and um, I don't see the, um, the 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 traffic being something that is to quite the exaggerated extent that's been represented tonight. Um, we're hearing two sides of a story. One, there's there's no traffic, so it won't impact downtown, but there's too much traffic, and it's gonna impact the bay. So, I mean, you can't really have it both ways. There's It's a modest amount of an additional traffic to an existing busy bay that that is gonna connect the east side of the lake to the west side of the lake is how my general approach is to it. I guess I have a quick question because it hasn't been brought up yet, and that is the existing business that rents um, paddle boards and kayaks. It was touched on briefly, but it hasn't been uh, yet really discussed. Um, the people who rent those are inexperienced. Um, I, they're called silent sports. And um, the, the bay, uh, St. John's Bay, is shallow, and it's a relatively safe spot. Um, when you increase traffic, and it won't be just like one boat going once to check to see if the pier is open. You cannot see the proposed pier from the entrance to the bay. So you are going to have to drive into the bay. Well, it might be full, so you go back out, and you might be doing that multiple times. There may very well be multiple boats. So the traffic, it's not going to be a nice little single file lane like my fifth graders back in the day. Um, it's going to be very busy. It will jeopardize not only the business that's already existing and thriving at that spot or right next to that spot. Um, it's also going to make the bay far um, less safe for those inexperienced kayakers. Um, and paddle boarders especially. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm very uh, strong and fit, and paddle boards are not easy. Um, and I do not feel comfortable going out of the bay on a paddle board. I've done it, and I've lived to regret it. Um, I, uh, so I, I think that has not, not been touched on. And I do want to address the um, number one. I have a degree in environmental science, so when people talk about what's to save in the bay, like it's no big deal. It actually is. The type of uh, plants that exist in the bay um, are unique to the bay, and that is where the feeder fish hang out that feed all those nice big bass and other large, uh, larger fish that come in every night throughout the summer. The DNR has regulated um, harvesting of weeds in our bay specifically so that we do not disturb uh, those uh, aquatic plants that house those fish. When we have the props and the nice lady who delivered these, that's one boat once, um, that, and that was a pontoon that came through the bay. Uh, it is regular, and the bay is very resilient. Nature itself is very resilient, but it can't overcome multiple boats multiple times in the day. You cannot argue that this pier is going to be this boon to the downtown businesses and at the same time have zero impact on the bay. It's going to obviously do, do both. We just have to um, recognize um, what we're willing to sacrifice. 
Um, the Bay is a delicate ecosystem. It is a designated legally for decades. Every pier in that bay was there before the designation. If you were present, and Tom, you were present <coughs> at the DNR hearing, they openly said they were not considering any environmental impacts on the on the bay when they permitted that pier. How and why they then inserted all this happy language in the permit that made everyone feel good, I can't explain it, which is why there are a lot of very good people writing checks to challenge that decision because it doesn't make sense. The DNR has, d has ignored their own rules. That entire bay is an ASNRI. It's a legal definition. It has been that way. If you read the sewer pack study that the Lake Welfare um, Committee paid for a few years back, it explains in great detail how it's different from other parts of the bay. So if people see critters, and I still do too, that's great. Nature will try to find a way, but we are making it harder and harder. We, we grind up that bay, we destroy the feeder fish, we destroy the fishing in the lake, we will then increase the silt load that goes right down that river. We're gonna get a visit and a call from the folks at Namabin and every other lake down downstream. So it's not in isolation and it's not about whether or not we like the idea of a pier. I love the idea of a pier, by the way, I really do. Just not there. The entire lake is an important is. ecological resource. No different. St. John's Bay is part of the larger lake here. The fish are everywhere. They're spawning everywhere. I know from my observation, they spawn all over Zastro Bay. The DNR has been out here. They were out here a month ago doing, doing the fish census. They said the largest fish catch was on Oakwood Bay. Look where the fishermen are. You want to know where the fish are, watch the fishermen. They're in the bay. The feeder fish are in the bay. And it is, you're right, it's all one system. That's, you're absolutely right. This is four additional slips in a larger area. If, I hope these people aren't asking us to outlaw slips and boats on, on St. John's Bay, because they're the ones that have the slips and the boats on St. John's Bay. This is a small increase. I know there's a lot of passion around this. You know, I think the one thing we all agree on is this is our most valuable and precious resource and we need to protect it. Okay, no argument there. So the report from the Wisconsin DNR is good news. The resource managers reviewed it. They did an on-site visit to St. John's. They assigned experts in water quality, conservation, fisheries, floodplain, dam safety, and every one of those experts approved this project. Mark, I, I've been working with a lot of experts from the DNR. They didn't send anybody. They put all that language in there, but they did not send people. I asked. I asked to meet them there. We were asked to trust the experts. Now you're telling us not to trust the experts. Um, you know, it is frustrating. That's but why we're challenging. Quote from their findings of fact. Um, their findings of fact. Quote, the proposed project will not adversely affect water quality, will not cause pollution, will not impact wetlands, will not obstruct navigation. The structure will not be detrimental to the public interest, will not be detrimental to aquatic habitat, water quality, or scenic beauty. This is a good project for people off the lake. It's not just for people who live on the lake. If you live on the lake, you have a pier. You have a place to stop. If you, have, if you live off lake, then you have an emergency. You want to find a bathroom. You want to dispose of your trash. You got little Johnny seasick. You have no place to go. This gives. This is more valuable to our off lake visitors. Again, you. If you were at the meeting and you were, do you remember what she said? Do you remember what Allison said? It was a hearing. It was mostly. And what did, what did Allison say about the impact on the bay? What did she say? You want me to recite the whole meeting? No, I want you to say what Allison said about not, not taking sure it into account. I'm not sure what you want me to say. This is their official, this is their official report after doing their study. 
if you want to talk about things that were said prior to them reviewing our application or making the site visit or sending their experts, th that's, that's irrelevant. What matters is their official stance, and this is it. I guess my only other question is, is the city ready and willing to fund a defense attorney when it goes to court? I know that's not part of the uh, budget I, I think discussion. That's ridiculous that you would even say that that we should be making a decision about what is what is very well supported based on threats of a lawsuit. I think that's ridiculous. Tom, I have a couple of questions. One, as far as the insulation cost. Uh, I think it was in the $20,000 range. Uh, I had a floating pier when I was living on the lake. Um, they seem to be very easy to install. I've seen a member of them, you just screw the pipes in and haul it up, you know, across. Where did that tremendous cost come from? Did you had multiple contractors estimating the same or relatively the same cost? It just seems to be no, so much higher in relationship to the cost of the pier. No, we only had about ten thousand dollars in the cost uh, for installation, um, and uh, that includes the contractor, and that also includes the um, the pile posts that the uh, pier will be set on. That's not included in the um, um, in the cost of the pier. Um, also, there's a couple other things. The original uh, cost estimate uh, didn't did not include uh, the shipping of the pier. Uh, did not include any permitting and engineering expenses. Um, and also, uh, I do believe that the uh, estimate before you um, is uh, a bit conservatively high, and you want to do that when you're applying for a grant, uh, because this grant will fund 50% of what you ask for, and therefore, you know, if we go in there with a cost estimate of $80,000, and it turns out to be $82,000, the DNR is only going to give us, you know, $40,000. Um, so you want to make sure that um, that your cost uh, includes a contingency uh, so that uh, you'll get a full 50% um, funding when the project's over. Uh, but if we you know, do the project and it's only $80,000, uh, then, then both entities would fund $40,000. Okay. Uh, the, the other other question I had is what was Berber brought up tonight and some uh, things in writing. Uh, this group has already planned to appeal this and they have to appeal it within like 10 days, and then the DNR has to come back with the 30 days, which is a pretty short time frame. Uh, I think if they would win their case, and we've already installed the pier, we'd be in kind of a mess. We'd have to take it out, give it back, probably couldn't do it at that time. So I think it might make some sense just to wait the, the, the 30 days, let that play out, then we, we know, know for sure. It wouldn't be an issue. Uh, I've been told that if this goes to a contested case hearing, you're probably talking at least six months uh, before a decision is uh, is finalized. It's it's not a month. It, was, it, it seemed pretty clear from the comment that there was an intent to um, contest this indefinitely. So I don't know how you postpone something that's not on my calendar. Um, but I'll make it. Oh, just one other point that people are referencing the, the DNR's letter. Um, one point that's, that is in there, there's, they seem to embrace, be embracing the fact that this is an application for slick, six slips when that linear footage from any, any private landowner, which we're, we're a landowner, um, has, I mean, you could, you could be asking approval for 13, and that was an initial draft of this back two years ago, and it, it got downsized quite a bit. Um, so, I, I mean, I, that, that's one point that they bring up in their, in their letter, but also the whole fact that um, it went through the different agencies and, I mean, they're, just, they're not reluctantly approving this. I mean, they're paying for half of it. I mean, I don't see where there's, um, I don't know, it's, it's their job to look after natural resources and they're, they're promoting this as something that they're backing with money and that, that speaks volumes to me as well. It's also their mission to 
ensure the right of all people to use and enjoy these resources. And that's that's state of Wisconsin law. This is a this is a public property. Waterways are public property. It's not something for lake owners to say we want to discourage others from enjoying the same privilege. Everybody has a right to use these waters. Paul, real quickly, getting back to your um, concern about timing and, and when we should approve this and whatnot. Um, we still need to get the uh, grant approval, and there's a lag in time between when the city uh, would approve the budget required to go forward to the grant approval. Right now, if you approve this, um, we would be considered at the uh, August Waterways Commission meeting. Um, if the grant was approved on, in early August, uh, we would get our grant approval letter in late August or early September. And we can't order the dock until then. And more than likely, um, you know, if we're ordering the dock in late August, early September, uh, that's not getting installed this year. And then our permit says that we can't install the pier between March 15th and June 15th. Uh, so more than likely, right now, the earliest this is getting installed is mid-June of next year. Well, I simply don't want to spend the money. And while I appreciate, I've heard a lot of, from a lot of good people on both sides that I absolutely respect. Um, and I appreciate um, the lack or the apparent lack of environmental impact. Um, I don't believe that there's going to be a significant economic benefit to this. I think it's uh, very minor at best. Um, but given that we've gone to the citizens for the last uh, twice within the last uh, five or six years to ask for additional revenue, um, I just don't want to spend the money especially on a um, on a project that is um, that isn't supported by the older people that represent um, that side of the lake it's unfortunate I've supported dredging in the past um, but it's you know it's it's obviously not supported by the people by the the older people that I would defer to um, and defer to their districts in their judgment so I, I guess that's where my head is at right now As a latecomer to the party, um, I've been listening to, to what everybody says, and I've been getting all kinds of mail on both sides of the issue, as everybody else has. And it seems like this should be a project that we could get the entire citizenship to support. This might not be the project that the entire citizenship will support, but I think that the idea of access from the lake to downtown is something we all raise our hand and say, yep, that's a good thing. But if we go through St. John's Bay, not so much. So I'm not in favor of it either. I guess the one other thing I'd like to say is we've been very successful at dividing the city, and that bothers me deeply. I think we should work together to find um, things that we can agree on. This has been very adversarial for two and a half years. Yeah, one thing that, uh, to your comment on that, that, that's been discussed at length about where this could go and this was the really the only option as far as to have access to downtown. Any of the other proposed sites wouldn't allow for you to get to downtown. So. As far as the controversy goes with where, the, where to put this, to say no to this area is essentially to say no to any access to downtown. And, and I don't recall any issue that we've had 100% agreement on. You can't please all the people all the time. And if you try, we'll never get anything done. Yeah. It, it, you just can't. And anything we do is not just impacting one district or another. We all have a we're all out in a particular district to to be close to those people, but all of our decisions affect the entire city. So we're making these these votes 
for the entire community, not just for one district or another. No, and I, and I appreciate that. And like I said, I've heard and respect a lot of different opinions. The opinion in District 5 is that they'd rather not spend the money. And, I've, and that's just where it starts and where it ends for me. Um, I wish there was a compromise. You know, you Lakers get along really well voting for dredging, and that's great. Um, I, it's unfortunate that there isn't a, a compromise here that could be reached. Um, but, you know, with these increasing costs, the fact that we've gone back to the well, to the taxpayers again and again, um, I would rather not spend the money. All right. Is there any? Oh. Oh, sorry, I just had one more question. What is the deadline for um, knowing that we have the funding for this? Like, when do you need to know by to be able to submit the application that you're, that you're talking about? Yeah, I would need to. I would need that to have that into the DNR by June 1st. June 1st, okay. Before June 1st. Mr. Mayor, I move that we table this motion well, we have a motion and a second, so we're going to go ahead and vote it, and we'll move forward from there. I'll, I'll just make one cautionary note, and that is I don't think we should look at um, future um, amenities like this or other, like, uh, you know, park upgrades or, you know, pavilions or, um, you know, play equipment or bicycle stands or whatever. Um, we shouldn't be looking for a return on investment as far as how it's going to turn a dollar back to the city. Um, it's really we're, we have to be really focused on on fulfilling the goals of the the park and rec and the the general um, uh, master plan as far as use and enjoyment of the of people's property and the in the lake and the land and and uh, and you know in our parks and and so I. I'd, I'd like to have the just for like I said as a caution for future um, requests for items like this or pickleball courts or whatever. Um, it's it's not a dollar coming back to you, right? Um, this is this is something that's enhancing the general life of the of the populace. Is, is how I'm, how I approach those things. All right. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Can I get a, do you want to raise your hands? Yeah. Three. Three. All opposed? Three. So that for the nays, Price, Grimmer, Wilkin, and Valdi. Yeah. No abstentions. All right. We will move on. Okay. Mayor's report. Discussion and possible action on the following items. <clears throat> A1, confirm appointment of Leslie Donovan to the citizens member position on the Park and Rec Commission and Tree Board vacated by Michael Bryan's terms to expire for 2025. I'll move to approve Leslie Donovan for Park and Rec. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, we'll move on to 10, new business. 10A, discussion of possible action regarding the installation of up to five overdose aid kits, OAKS is uh, the abbreviation for it. Waukesha County to provide boxes and refills at no charge. So you had some information there in your packets. And uh, this was something that um, came up um, at the Waukesha County um, uh, community, all the communities that meet uh, with Paul Farrow uh, that are in Waukesha County meet uh, quarterly. And this is something that uh, Paul and his team um, and the, um, um, I'm forgetting what the right term is, but their, their health um, administrator is uh, advocating for. And I thought it was really something the council should consider. Basically what this is, they're, they're overdose AIDS kits. So they're boxes, um, metal boxes, um, that look um, just like a little cabinet they're about this big and about uh, maybe six inches deep. And inside of them are nasal sprays of naloxone. And what these are are for kids that, or adults that uh, have, are, are doing drugs that would have um, 
fentanyl and other things in them that would cause them to overdose. Um, you give one, to, depends upon how much they need, one to four of these nasal sprays and you can save somebody's life. It's, it's just that simple. Um, the county has uh, 200 of them in stock and Paul's asking for municipalities that would be interested in having some of these to step forward uh, and request them. Um, and so what we were looking at was uh, five of them. Uh, certainly if we needed more in the future, we could ask, but it seemed like that was a good place to start. Um, just some key criteria that they think um, uh, deliver them or make them available to the right audiences are uh, park bathrooms, um, libraries, schools. They're trying to target the 18 to 24 year old range. Um, and it's and not by a camera, not somewhere where you can be recorded taking it. The idea is you have a, a teenage friend that you're concerned about, that you know is doing that, and you need, want to keep two of them in your purse or your book bag or backpack. And when you go out, you bring them then in case your friend might need them, wherever you might happen to be. It could be a parent who knows they have a, a, a child or a teenager or a young adult that has some issues or for all I know, a spouse, but somewhere where they can access them. So um, I talked to Paul Zellner at Public Works, I talked to the police chief, and I talked to Stephanie over at the library, and all three of them were very supportive that we could find locations to put these. Um, the responsibility we have is to check the boxes so that we can refill them. That, that's our liability. The county will provide the replacement doses at no charge. So we just need to check them. Um, I'm told by Paul Zellner that we clean the bathrooms on a regular schedule. It would be something that we're already there for. No problem to open up the cabinet and see how many we need to, to have. Stephanie uh, thought it was a good idea as well, that she thought her library staff would be able to do that. Um, wouldn't put it in the lobby area of City Hall, but down the hallway towards the bathrooms because the lobby has a camera, the hallway does not um, type of thing. So I bring it to your attention. I, I think it's a great idea, um, and I, I look for you to ask questions or discuss it, but I, I would hope someone would make a motion to uh, go ahead and request five of these from the county. I will make that motion. I'm thrilled. I second. All right. Is there any discussion? Just thank you for bringing it forward. Is this something that's already on our ambulances? Yes, all of our police officers carry these as okay. well as uh, the emergency vehicles. This is for the general public, really? This is for the general public. Okay. okay. This is for the general public. All right, seeing no more discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions passes. Okay, that's done with 10A. We'll move down to 10B, discussion and possible action to confirm the city's partic participation in meeting of Lake Country Fire and Rescue uh, partner municipalities for the purpose of discussing possible changes to the Lake Country and Fire Intermunicipal Agreement and to select two city representatives to join the city administrator in representing the city at these meetings. Tom? Yeah, as you'll recall, at our April 17th meeting, uh, we approved, the council approved um, cost sharing for a study to be done by the Wisconsin Policy Forum to look at um, the cost allocation uh, of Lake Country Fire and Rescue from an equity perspective. Um, uh, the villages of Neshota and Shaniqua, the other two kind of original three members with us uh, for Lake Country Fire and Rescue, they also approved that. Uh, but the other four members did not approve it. Uh, one of them uh, did have it on the agenda and uh, decided not to take any action. And the other three uh, did not uh, um, see fit to put it on their agenda. Um, and in the wake of that, um, Fire Chief Fennig is looking to find a way to um, try to make some progress as far as um, uh, what's going to happen with the intermunicipal agreement and cost allocations uh, in it. Uh, as of right now, the agreement says that uh, budgets can't increase by more than CPI plus 2%. So as of right now, 
Um, we couldn't even provide the funding that our uh, referendum and fire fee will uh, provide. We, we couldn't even provide that to uh, LCFR legally. Um, so what the fire chief has asked for is for each community um, to uh, uh, meet together uh, with their administrator and then one or two other city representatives um, that the council feels or, or the governing body feels comfortable um, could uh, largely um, speak on behalf of the, the municipality and the governing body. Uh, anything that's um, um, proposed or recommended at these meetings uh, will certainly not be binding. They'll still go back to individual uh, governing bodies as a whole uh, for, um, for individual uh, votes on, on anything. Um, but it's really identified, you know, not only by Chief Fennig, but also by each of the administrators that, um, you know, we've got to come together and we've got to do so in a forum that um, allows for um, open and frank conversation. So the idea is that these meetings will not be public meetings. Uh, they'll be uh, more staff-like meetings um, with um, um, primary representatives from each municipality and that they'll also be you know, a number that's, uh, you know, smaller than, you know, what we had at Cushing or, or at uh, Kettle Moraine School for the um, uh, combined meeting we had a few months ago. Uh, so with that being said, um, Chief Fennig's already scheduled the first meeting. It's for a week from today. Uh, it's an afternoon meeting uh, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And um, so what I'm looking for the council is, first of all, um, you know, confirm that we would like to participate in these um um, meetings, which I would suggest and, and recommend that we do, and then to identify uh, one or two uh, representatives of the city to join me uh, in these meetings. And one other thing that I'll add is it was looked into with regards to uh, whether fire board members should participate or not, and um, Attorney Macy, on behalf of Lake Country Fire and Rescue, uh, opined that um, anything more than one fire board member participating would risk a negative quorum uh, situation. And so his recommendation is that not more than one fire board member be involved. And Chief Fenning has already identified that he intends to have um, the board president um, be that one member to represent the board. I uh, think we should participate and I would nominate uh, Iker and or Schaefer. Oh. I'll be in Ontario next Monday, if that weighs into it at all, but I appreciate your vote of confidence. I'm available Monday. I think Mark looks like a good choice. And, you know, this will be multiple meetings, so, you know, it would be still be appropriate to appoint two people for future meetings. trying to wiggle off, though. <laughs> 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 Well, I would like to participate in that if, if Tim oh, yeah. don't want to do it. There you go. Why not? You? I trust Ken. Yeah. Just I just assume. Yeah. As the other retired member of the council, I would offer to represent the city of Delafield. He's new. Hook him in. Hook yeah. him. <laughs> well, there's a lot of history on this one to catch up to some speed on. <laughs> That, uh, it would know, be my only challenge on this one. Um, I've participated in a half dozen board meetings prior to this even becoming an issue, so or attended, I should say. Mm -hmm. So there's a fair amount of background on that. I mean, Tom's the linchpin, regardless of who is uh, who's joining him or who rotates through. So I wouldn't discourage anyone from rotating through. If everyone wants to participate, I think that would be fine too. But I mean, Tom knows the council and knows knows our intent with Lake Country funding. So yeah, there's, just, I, there's kind of something refreshing about having some new eyes. I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I, I trust Dirk to dig in. Huh? He, can, he can give you he can give you an idea you haven't thought of. <laughs> I, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a high bar, Tim. <laughs> so Tom would be at every meeting, and plus plus one or two others that would rotate, or 
I, I would say if, if the two representatives are both available, that myself and the two would attend. Uh, but if only one is available, that works too. And maybe we should have two so that when one isn't available, you're, you're still not alone. I think that makes sense. Yep. You provide good continuity. And then, um, Tom, you're going to provide um, um, an update on these meetings, or are these more? It's not a. It's not a. We'll see. It's it. a, not a forum in any way. There's no uh, obligation for you to report publicly on them. Correct. That, that's correct. And you know, there's a good and chance. There's, there's a good chance these uh, meetings will turn into some sort of negotiation. Right. Um, and as long as they're negotiations, that more than likely they will be. Um, kept uh, private, but to the extent necessary, um, we could probably share some of that uh, as necessary in closed session here with the council. And so um, I'll use my discretion as far as um, when things are at a point where where I think they need to come back to council, and, and I'll also um, you know bounce bounce my thoughts off of uh, whatever two representatives you uh, um, elect and, and get their opinion on that as well. I was kind of negotiating with ourselves though too. You only have three out of seven municipalities. No, I think they're all trying to attend this one, and oh, I are. think I think. Oh, the the, I'm sorry, I misread your letter. Though. Correct. The the three out of seven is is who are would participate in the, the study, the written study with the Wisconsin Policy Forum. And the village presidents and town chairmen are the ones that are participating. So I think it's important that the mayor also be one of the members from the other communities, that the mayor, the mayor be part of that process. <laughs> Are you looking for a vote or a nomination? I'll go ahead and nominate the mayor as well. So, yeah, I think a motion's appropriate. And, um, you know, if you want to nominate two people, um, as we talked about, that probably makes a lot of sense. I'll, I know the mayor is interested, so I'll nominate the mayor. I'll make a motion to nominate the mayor to this. Uh, group. I'll second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Are, are we. Uh, clarification. We voted on the mayor there. Voted on the mayor. So now so we have Tom's one. asked Tom. for two, so Plus I don't know. It seems like a battle between Who is Mark the and Dirk. <laughs> Who is the second on that? I'm willing to do it. it You're was, not going to hurt my Mark. feelings if, if it's Dirk. I'll, I'll be happy to defer. <laughs> I'll nominate uh, Mr. Schaefer from District 2. Second. All right. Do I have to vote? Oh. <laughs> Who had the second on that? Dirk. Dirk. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay. Do we need a motion on the participation, Tom? No. Okay, so now we are on to uh, seven. No. 10 C. 10 C. Discussion of possible action regarding ideas to improve the flow of traffic through downtown as requested by Alderperson Price. Okay, uh, as we all know, the traffic flow is slow, especially at peak times through the downtown area. It's probably only gonna get worse when the new office building opens up and new cars come in in morning and evening, and then the St. John subdivision starts getting rolling. Uh, many of our citizens' comments, we've heard people um, being irritated and upset with how long it takes to get to get through town. So I discussed this last month to, to get this on the agenda. I asked Tom Hafner for a, a suggestion on who to contact as a resource, and he suggested Art Bauman uh, for, his, or for his input. Art is currently on our public works committee, works for the DOT and, and, and lives here. Uh, his job is to evaluate traffic studies and recommend street signs and stop sign placement. So, that's about as good a person as you could possibly get. Uh, the mayor mentioned to me, uh, I think after the last meeting, that council was probably not qualified to make these suggestions, and I totally agree. It turns out that the past council overruled public works when they put in the three stop signs that we have right now, causing a problem. So I suggest that we let this up to the experts. 
DOT originally recommended no stop signs on, on Genesee or a stoplight at Genesee and Maine. Uh, Art said it makes sense to do a traffic study and to evaluate one. Um, the Hendricks project, they did an extensive one, but it said for whatever reason, he's always got those. He didn't get this one, so he hasn't had a chance to, to read it. So in order to allow some to discussion, I'd like to motion that the traffic study just discussed will be sent to Art and the Public Works Committee to come up with a recommendation to the council to improve the traffic flow in downtown. I'll, I'll second, that makes sense. I mean, they did, so we, we, I'm aware of the traffic studies that were done, and there's all sorts of fun things that are in, that are, that are like moving pieces to this puzzle right now with the construction work. Right. We haven't enforced the, the no through trucking yet. Um, and then the, the street closure too, like Milwaukee Street, you're not sure if you can go down there or not. I mean, so it does confuse a lot of people. So um, Art, let's see what Art has to say. But he was, he has not seen it. He says, I don't see why I didn't get to see it. He said, it just didn't get to me. So he said, I would always love to see it. And then we could discuss that at our committee and then decide he, whether to have to expand that in some way, or there's enough already there, and then make some recommendations to the council and we can discuss it there. What's the expense to do this? Uh, I don't think that at this point it would be any expense because that's already been done. If he would, he would suggest to do a further study, then there would be an expense to discuss. But he just wants to read the study that Hendricks just did you know, over the last two or three months. And then they, they can discuss it at their group. And if they feel they have enough to make a recommendation, they could. Or if not, they could make a recommendation to do something X. So why, what, what action are you looking for tonight? We're just, he's just saying, let's turn it over to Art. That's what we're voting on. Public works would. Doesn't need to be that. But why do, why do we need to do that? Why can't that just be given to them? I think he's putting his, his point to rest. <laughs> <laughs> he asked for it to be on the agenda. He's moving it along. That's my it question. Right? It hasn't okay. gone anywhere. So. Taking it off our plate. Okay. Yeah. Giving it to public Put works. it in the hands of the experts. So let them come yeah. back with us. Yeah, they they may come back and say, no, oh, the way it is is fine. But. Um, be very interested to see what the experts have to say. Yeah, and I, Tim or Tom, just correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe the one done by the golf course stacked 705 on top of Beacon Hill and then included the golf course, if I remember correctly. Is you mean, that? You mean the development for the golf course? The, the traffic study was stacked for all three developments. The one Paul's oh. referring to art. I, Pretty sure that's right. Yeah, Anybody I think the, the remember so differently? So there, there are two different ones. I think right. I mean the the one for the golf course and the Beacon Hill. It is two, supplemental. It is two different ones. But what Kent is saying is the golf course would have been directed to include the traffic that will exist once 705 oh. Genesee Street is uh, fully occupied and functioning. Yeah, it helps to understand the question. You're you're correct. So the, the point the, being, it'll be a good one for them to review. It's right. it's not only what is today, but it is what is in the near future. Well, uh, would we? I guess we could also consider. You know, the the Hendricks development around St. John's is probably not over after Beacon Hill and and the golf course. There's the tennis courts. There's the post office potential for development. So that's. Um, that's in addition to uh, to those existing projects. Well, yeah, I'd say let's put that on their dime. Yeah. When they come and say they want to make a change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how we got these two. Right. Okay. So we're ready to move on. Okay. Well, uh, yes. Those yeah. motion, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, D, approval of the voucher list. I move to approve the voucher list. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes. Okay, report of city officials, A, city administrator. Yeah, I'm going to run through these uh, pretty quick here. Um, number one and two had to do with uh, our recent uh, general obligation borrowing that we did. Um, we had the um, 
Well, first of all, we work with uh, Moody's Investment Service to um, uh, have our uh, credit rating uh, updated. Uh, we did have a conference call with uh, uh, with one of their analysts, and um, uh, ultimately they um, upheld our current rating of AA2. Um, I always am hoping for the AA1 rating increase, but we didn't quite get there. Uh, but a lot of positive comments from uh, Moody's, and um, uh, I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, I don't know with our tax base and lack, lack of diversity if we can realistically get to AA1, but um, uh, everything that's within our control, I, I feel like we're heading in the right direction to, um, at a minimum, maintain our credit rating and um, um, keep the fingers crossed for possible increase in the future. Um, with regards to our borrowing, we had very positive results, uh, much better than expected. Um, our uh, borrowing rate came in at under 3.15%, uh, which is um, about what the average bar municipal borrowing was about a year ago. Uh, so we um, were fortunate that we avoided the 4% the and the 3.5% uh, um, interest rates that um, most uh, borrowings have been going for recently. And I'm um, so very pleased by, uh, by that. Uh, it was also a premium bid that we had. So we had um, uh, an additional $25,000 that last week I had to make an administrative decision on how to handle those. Uh, knowing that we potentially had this pure project uh, tonight, uh, we um, uh, kept about $15,000 of that uh, to provide the flexibility to possibly do the peer project, or now we'll have it for uh, as a contingency for other capital projects. It'll be in our capital project fund, and the other ten thousand dollars was used to reduce the borrowing size. So that's another positive uh, uh, sign that we're able to reduce the size a little bit, in addition to the very good interest rate. Any questions on that on the borrowing? It is it is great news. Um, quick update on the. Um, downtown no through trucking signage and enforcement. Uh, we did get the county um, permits for the signs. Uh, we did receive the signs last week. Uh, we got our call into Diggers Hotline that was supposed to clear today. And um, uh, first couple of days this week, the um, public works crews are busy on the east side doing brush collection, so that's all hands on deck. But as we move to the west, it'll free up a few of the um, employees and we expect to have those signs up this week, Wednesday or Thursday. And the uh, police department is aware of that and um, is um, ready to go as far as um, uh, enforcement activities and, um, and whatnot associated with that. So um, that should start this week. Uh, and lastly, um, another positive update with regards to budgetary issues. Uh, at least positive from my perspective. There's a lot of been, been a lot of debate about this, but um, you've probably seen in the newspaper headlines that um, there's been a, a lot of strides made with regards to the Wisconsin legislature for uh, increasing state shared revenue to municipalities that's been stagnant for about 20 years. Um, it appears that uh, everybody's in agreement that it needs to increase and that everybody's willing to have it increase uh, right now. The Republican-controlled legislator has a, has a plan out there um, that would increase the city of Delafield's um, contribution and shared revenue from um, $91,000 a year uh, and increase it by over 200%. That would give us another $188,000 uh, to bring us up into the $280,000 range. Um, the governor's office has um, threatened to veto it because he says the funding should be even higher than that and come with less restrictions than what's placed on it. But um, so uh, the story will uh, play out, but um, all indications are that um, um, the Wisconsin League of Municipalities has been um, successful in their lobbying effort and trying to get the um, state to uh, increase uh, shared revenue, which is a positive. And uh, that's all I have for my update tonight. Yeah, at least on that news, assuming the number stays the same, you know, the numbers don't match up quite exactly right, but I guess I would like to see us, you know, instead of going to the voters and asking them to renew the five-year uh, referendum that they passed for us, which was on purpose to be temporary, to give us some time to find out other ways to be able to uh, afford the employees that we already had 
that uh, we could use that money to offset that. It's not an exact match, but it's close. Still need to do more work, but it takes up a good part of that money, so we don't have to go back to the citizens and ask them to renew that referendum. So hopefully as time pa passes out, that's in a direction the council would feel comfortable in heading as well. Okay, city clerk. I do not have a report. Nothing from the city treasurer. City council requests for future agenda items. Paul. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? No? All right. We'll move on to 12 correspondence. I'll refer you to anything that was in the packet. Number 13, matters for possible closed session. The council will reconvene in open session after completion of the closed session to consider the balance of the agenda. 13A, motion to convene into closed session pursuant to the following provisions. A1, motion to convene into closed session pursuant to the Provisions of Wisconsin State Ta Statute 19.851C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, more specifically regarding the evaluation of performance goals for the chief of police. And the second item is motion to convene into closed session pursuant to provision Wisconsin 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, more specifically, excessive property assessment claims from Walgreens, 2901 Gulf Street, tax ID number DLC 0801-999-010. Motion convene, oh, that's it. I'll make a motion to convene into closed session. Second. I need a roll call. Henry? Aye. Schaefer? Aye. Valdi? Aye. Wilkins? Aye. Grimmer? Aye. Price? Aye. Iker? Aye.
if everyone turns their mics on, then we'll all be ready to vote. You're so smart, Tim. Oh. Okay, looking for a motion from the council. I'm I'll good. make a motion to go back into open session. Second. Second. <laughs> I'm sorry, who seconded that? I did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Grimmer? We're going to have a knockdown drag yeah, out here? Power play. <laughs> At 9.57. A little punchy. Okay, Henry. Aye. You don't sorry. have a motion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Schaefer. Aye. Valdi. Yeah, aye. Wilkins. Aye. Grimmer. Aye. Price. Aye. Eicher. Aye. Motion carried. S discussion and possible action regarding excessive property assessment claim settlement from Walgreens 2901 Gulf Road, tax parcel ID DELC 0801 999 010. I'll make a motion to reject the Walgreens settlement offer. I second. Grimmer, Henry. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions, passes. All right, seeing no further business, the council meeting is now over at 9.58 p.m. Thanks for everybody that stayed. <laughs>